So yeah, I'm going to quickly talk about Vulkan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so first quickly about myself. I'm a PhD student at the TU of Arts and uh, I'm working with Vulkan for over one and a half years now. So uh, I knew quite a bit already. I already sub submitted bug reports about very specific use cases of the specification, etc. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me afterwards. I know a lot more details than I can tell you in 10 minutes. Um, I was very excited when Wokan came out, wanted to immediately try it, but unfortunately, none of my hardware supported. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, at the university, I got newer hardware and then I could use it. So what is Wokan? First of all, it's an API. That means it's basically the interface that your programmers use to talk to the graphics card in this specific case. So usually all your program code runs on the CPU, the processor of the computer, and the GPU does graphics and maybe some compute stuff. And the API is basically that allows your programmers to, to use the GPU, the graphics card. Um, it's cross-platform, that means it runs on very various different systems. Um, it's 3D graphics, uh, which is basically what you want in your game engine, right? You're one 3D graphics, not just 2D. And I took a screenshot that I stole from a very infamous game <laughs> that actually has birthday today, I heard, like five years, so happy birthday. And yeah, so graphics. And you can also do com can, can do compute, which might not be very interesting for game developers, although it might be very helpful to do physics stuff, for example, or neural networks if you have an AI that is very advanced. Okay. So, why should gamers care? First of all, it basically means that you can get your pretty pictures faster. So you can increase the frame rate of Vulkan. That's about as much as a gamer would probably care. Game developers probably care a bit more already, even if they don't use Vulkan directly, because using Vulkan means, and that's the interesting part actually, that um, you can do more with your CPU, because previously the OpenGL driver, or DirectX 11 or something, they did a lot of work because the, the API was not very direct to what you can do with the hardware. And that is all stripped away in the modern uh, graphics APIs like Vulkan. So the driver is doing a lot less stuff. And that means it frees up some work uh, or some resources on your CPU um, and you can do more with your CPU basically. Um, yeah, what else? Um, OpenGL also had the problem that it was not really multi threading capable, so you had to do all the rendering on one core on the CPU. And now with Vulkan, you can use multiple cores of the CPU. Again, the GPU doesn't change much. OpenGL was already quite optimized, so uh, if you're GPU bound in your application, you might not notice some difference. But if you're CPU bound, um, if the CPU was the one that is always running at 100% and the GPU was kind of bored, uh, then Vulkan helps you to up your game there. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and now if you're a graphics developer, so you're actually going to use newer APIs, graphics APIs, why is Vulkan very nice? Vulkan is very nice because you have uh, layers that you can put between your application and the actual driver. And one of them are the validation layers, which help you a lot in development. I don't know. I actually wanted to ask, has anyone of you ever used Vulkan before? Yes, one, two, yes. Uh, OpenGL or any other graphics API? So who used OpenGL and loves the errors that you get? <laughs> yeah, nobody. Because it's super difficult, but in Vulkan it's really, really nice. So the development is much easier. Um, if you are platform independent, you probably use OpenGL, and then if you want to work on mobile, you use OpenGL ES. That is also something nice, uh, because Vulkan, there is just one version. You don't have the differentiation between a mobile and a desktop API anymore. Um, then you might ask yourself, how well is Vulkan supported? Well, if you're using a game engine, pretty much all of the modern game engines uh, support it. Unity, of course, the Unreal 4 engine, the Cry engine, since 5.4, I think. Uh, the IDE tech engines, uh, the current version is 6 that officially supports it, but since they are open source, also there have been Vulkan releases of uh, version 3 and 4, 
and the Source 2 engine by Valve, and notably which uses it for uh, Dota 2. Um, then in terms of hardware, all the desktop uh, uh, graphics hardware vendors, AMD, NVIDIA and Intel support it. Uh, in terms of time, any hardware that is newer than 2012 should support it. Uh, so I bought my last PC in 2011, my prior one, that's why I couldn't use it. Um, but starting 2012, you should be pretty much fine with the, maybe the exception of Intel, where on Windows only the hardware since uh, 2015, namely Skylex supports it. But that's a driver thing. Um, on mobile, all the mobile GPU vendors also support Vulkan starting 2012. But it depends a lot on um, how new your device and which chip you have in your device. But I would say any mobile phone that was designed in 2016 and later should actually support Mocha. Um, operating system wise, uh, it's supported on Windows, starting with Windows 7, which is fun because DirectX 12, which is the competitor of Mocha, as in another modern graphics API, only supports Windows 10, nothing older. Uh, Apple is a bit of a pain because uh, Apple has their own competitor again for Vulkan which is called Metal and uh, they even deprecated OpenGL support already uh, for iOS and macOS um, but there is Molten BK which is uh, financed kind of by Valve um, that is basically implementing the Vulkan API on top of Metal and uh, it works very well at least for Dota 2, <laughs> because they're there, there they can render faster with Molten VK than they can with OpenGL on a Mac. Uh, and then there's Android. Google decided immediately to support uh, Vulkan, so no issues there. And on Linux, of course, you also have Vulkan support. There it mainly depends on, on your hardware and which driver version you use. Okay, um, question How do you get started if you actually want to try out uh, developing for Vulkan? I don't know if you're a student, for example. I would recommend you at least to learn, if you learn something new, learn what a modern API is. There's probably not much point anymore in starting with RX11 or OpenGL. Um, as a beginner, there is a very nice Vulkan tutorial website. I think it's just vulkantutorial.com. You find it super easy. Uh, then you can go through and then you just program something with it. Just like programming in general, you don't learn it by reading books, you just learn it by doing it. And then the API specification of Vulkan is actually very readable, so it's not like, uh, I don't know, some law text that you don't understand. I mean, there is some getting used to words, but that's pretty soon over and then you can just read the API specification, which is uh, very nice. So you don't need anything else, basically. And if you're interested in further advanced topics, then you can go to the GPU Open website that has, has very nice articles. This is a website uh, created by AMD. Um, you can have, find very interesting talks in the Chronos YouTube channel and if you want to see basically any graphics effect implementation there is a nice GitHub repository by Sasha Williams that has lots of examples of many different graphics techniques. So my recommendation is just do it. <laughs> so, do you have any questions? No, thanks. Uh, I'll be at the fridge as well, I guess. So, meet me there. Thank you.